Once you've completed all your presentation files, the next thing that you need to do is add a couple more drawing sheets to your original puzzle part drawings. Um, and you're going to be using, of your presentation files, you're going to be using this basic presentation. And once again, it should, from one of your ISO views, one of the corners, so if you basically click on these individual corners here, you kind of see how that doesn't look as great from the corners. But from this front ISO view, which is right on the left, back on the right, and then top up here, I have a nice gap between all my parts and I can see all of them well. So that's what your basic presentation should look like. And once you have that done, make sure it's saved. I have it open here, but just make sure you have it saved. You don't need it open. And you're going to go to iPro and we're going to go to open and navigate to wherever your puzzle cube drawings are, which mine are located right here uh, in my iDocuments IED folder, puzzle cube project, and then I have another inventor files folder in there as well. And then I'll go ahead and open my drawing files. And I'll go ahead and hit skip on this. And now I have all of my drawing part drawings open. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to add two sheets to this drawing or to this file. And so I'm going to right click over here in the browser in the empty space and select new sheet. Go ahead and type my information in for the template. I'm just going to use period one and then puzzle cube project. Actually, let's type puzzle cube. Hit OK. And now it actually created a second, like you can see this is the sixth sheet, but it just copied that first sheet name. So I need to right click on that and edit sheet. And I'm going to change this first one to cover page. And hit OK. And in order to move, I want this to be at the top, it's going to be my first sheet. So I'm going to click and hold on the icon. And I'm going to drag this and you can see the black line. And I want to drop it just above the blue part. So it's the first page. And I can minimize that blue part there. And then I'm going to create another new sheet and type my information in again. And puzzle cube. Hit OK. And that took the basically doubled up that first sheet again. So I need to right click edit sheet and I'm going to call this exploded view. And hit OK. Then I'm going to click and hold on that icon again, and I want to drag that up to just below the cover page, so in between cover page and my first part. Um, I'm not going to do the exploded view first. I'm going to do the cover page, so I want to double click and re-highlight the cover page. And on my cover page, I am going to place my isometric views or my assembly views of my puzzle cube. And what you want to make sure is that on your hand IS ISO drawings, that you did that your cover page you make matches this so you should have your front view and your back view uh, front ISO view and your back ISO view of your cube so you can see all six sides so I'll go ahead and minimize this and go back to my sheet and I'm gonna go to base and instead of going in here and selecting an individual part I'm going to select my assembly so I'm gonna click on that assembly and hit open and you'll notice that goes to a front view here. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to match this front view. So I have my green part up here on the right and the red here on the left. So I'm going to use my view cube here until I get to that orientation. And this first one I selected, my green part here and my red part here, is what I want. Now you'll notice your view cube or your um, ISO view is kind of small. If you go over to the drawing view window and go down to scale here in the bottom right corner, I'm going to change scale from one half scale to one to one. And that'll actually make my puzzle cube part full size. And then I'm going to drag this over here to the right, which goes back and matches my view here for my ISO. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to double click on it again. And I could have done this before I hit OK, but I'm going to click Shaded and hit OK to shade that part. Then I'm going to go to Base again, and I'm going to select my assembly again. So go and navigate and find my assembly. Hit OK or Open and drag this over here. Once again, I have my front view. Um, and this is the same view over here. And I'm going to go over to my scale and change that one to one. But remember, we're kind of flipping this towards us. So I actually want this on the other side of this view cube. That back bottom corner is the one that I want up here up front. So I'm going to click the bottom and then I'm going to click that front view there. And actually, let me go back here. Um, let's let's take a look at your ISO. So for this back ISO view, I want my blue part over here on the left and my purple part over here on the right. So let's kind of play with this here until I can get that to be the case. 
So I'm going to hit the bottom here and then I want to rotate this once and hit that ISO view. And if we go back and look, um, I kind of got it reversed here. I want the blue on this side and the purple on the other. Um, so I want this, this blue part here on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this bottom view. And we're going to play with this thing until we get it just where we want it. Let's see. And that's close, but I need to rotate it here a little bit. So let's rotate that there. So now I have my blue on this side, the purple on the other. Go back to my ISO and it matches my ISO view perfectly. So then I'm going to click the shaded icon and hit OK. And then I want to move these around so they're spread out, but they're horizontally even this way. And that is going to be your cover page. So once your cover page is done, we're going to go over and we'll uh, minimize that and then double click on my exploded view. And for this one, I am actually going to place, first thing I'm going to place is my basic presentation. So I'm going to go to the base button again. I also could right click and click base view. And I'm going to go to my file folder and I'm going to find my presentation basic and hit open. Now when I do that, it defaults to this left view, but I want to keep it in an ISO view. And I'm going to go ahead and scale this thing up to one half for now. And actually let's go to one to one and yours should be one to one. Um, but if I rotate around until I find my proper exploded view where I have all my gaps, I mean, it, you, it may take you a second to find the proper one because if you look at mine, the rest of these do not look very good. But as soon as I find that correct ISO view, which happens to be this one, I have all my gaps. That's the one I'm going to use. And then I want to drag this over here into the corner, give me a little bit of gap, and select Shaded and hit OK. And that's going to place my exploded view. The next thing I need to do is add part balloons, which are basically part identifying balloons and numbers. So in order to do that, I need to go to the annotate tab and then I'm going to come over to this table panel. And if I click the down arrow, there's two options. There's a balloon and an auto balloon. If you select balloon, you can go in and individually add a balloon to each part. Um, or we can go in and auto balloon all of our parts. So on assembly as we do later on in the semester or later on the spring rather we may have 10, 15, 20 parts in our assembly so auto balloon will work will work very well because it'll automatically place balloons for all of our parts. But And for this one we could probably use the individual balloon and place those individually but I'm going to go ahead and try the auto balloon. And the first thing you need to do if you look under selection it's going to ask you to select the view set which is this um, view that we inserted so I'm going to click on that and it's going to ask you to add or remove components and in order to add a component to this we're going to click on the edges of them you'll see that highlights red and if I click it it'll highlight blue and I want to do that for all five of my parts so all those are selected and then over here on the right hand side is where we're going to go next and it's going to be placement so I'll click on the select placement and you can see this is all horizontal here but I want to actually select the around option and if I move these part or move my cursor around on the screen, it'll kind of move these part balloons around a little bit as well. And you'll see some overlap over here on this side, and that's fine for right now because we can go back and move them later. Um, but I'm just going to click in a general area here, left click, and it's going to show where it's going to place them. And like I said, we have some overlap here, but we'll be able to go back and fix that later. And then once I have all that placed, I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to close this window. Now what you'll notice is that, once again, we have overlap here, and then also we have these arrows on the opposite side of the part, and then this one's a good distance away from this part, and I don't really like that. So I'm going to go around individually and fix these. So I'm going to click and hold on the 5, and I want to drag that down here. And then the actual pointer, I want to drag over here, and you'll see that it's an arrowhead. And you'll also see that that edge of that part highlights, which means I'm snapped to that edge. So I fixed that one. I'm going to go around and select the rest and move the rest of these around until they, they look good. Um, I want to move this up here. Let me zoom in here a bit. And I want it to snap to that edge. And then zoom back in here. And I'm going to move this to bubble over here. And then I want this one to be on this side because I got some nice empty space. So I'm going to drag the arrow over there and then drag that one up there as well. And now all of my part balloons, and this one could even go a little closer here. All of my part balloons are close to my part, and they're also, the arrows are on the same side of the part as the balloon, which is what I want. So once I have all those balloons selected, I want to click and drag my view over as far to the right as I can get it without overlapping that border. 
So notice my part balloons aren't touching and my parts aren't touching. And the next thing I need to do is create my parts list. And in order to do that, up here under the table panel as well, where the, where the balloon option was, is this parts list option. And when I click on that, it automat or it's going to ask me to select a view. So I'm going to click on that view that I wanted. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice it's going to give you this box here to place your parts list. Now, there's not really any place we can place this to not overlap our parts, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and place it in this bottom left corner for right now. And you'll see we got some overlap here. So what I can do is I can grab these yellow dots and I can drag my parts list so that it fits. And what I want to do is make it fit on this left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to drag that bottom up as well. And then drag that over just a bit. And what you'll notice is the part list automatically tells you your item number, which is what your balloon number is, how many of that part there are, and you only have one of each. If you had multiples, it'll show quantity two. And this is also where you'll notice if you accidentally uh, made two parts the same or just didn't notice, it'll, it'll only show four parts, and one of your parts will be labeled as quantity two. So that you'll know for sure that your parts are, you should have caught it by now, but you'll know for sure that two of your parts are the same. It'll tell you, it'll give you the part number, which is your file name, and then a blank description. So if we double click on the parts list, it brings up this editor and we can click in the description. And for each description, you're going to type what the name, what color the part is, and call it part. So purple part here, blue part here, orange part here, green part here and finally red part here and I'm gonna hit apply and OK and once you do that your descriptions fill in and this will complete your exploded view drawing sheet and once you have this exploded view drawing sheet done you should have a total of seven sheets cover page exploded view within each of your parts and once you have all that done make sure you go hit the save button just make sure you save all that you may get this um, option where it wants to update your original file. So I've input, imported my presentation file and a couple others. I'm going to hit yes to all and hit OK. And that is going to save my drawing file in my original location. What I also want to save is I want to save this drawing file as a PDF file where I can have all seven sheets in one PDF file and that'll make it easy for others to look at. You can open it if you don't have Inventor and then it'll also make it easier to print later. So I'm going to go ahead and click, click and have my cover page open. I'm going to go to iPro, Export, PDF. And then instead of just clicking and saving this, I want to save it as the same name. So it'll be PCube Drawings or underscore Drawings underscore first initial last name. But before I do that, I want to go to the Options tab. And I want to select All Sheets. If you don't do this, it'll just save whatever your um, currently selected sheet is, which in this case would be the cover page. So your PDF would just be one page long. But if I choose all sheets and hit OK and then save, and I, it's going to ask me to replace because I already have mine saved, and I'll hit yes. Now it's going to finish saving and it'll open up that PDF file. And if I click through it, it'll, you'll see that all of my drawings are all located in the same PDF file. And this makes it easier to share with others. If they don't have Inventor, you can share a PDF file and they can look at everything. Um, this is how usually drawings are shared in industry as well to those who don't or are not actually designing products. They're just looking at design. You usually use PDFs to share. So I'll go ahead and close that. And all of my drawings are now complete. And we'll go on to the next video on how to say or how to print everything and what all documents that you need in order to submit your final project.